So good afternoon, everybody. Mm, I would like to talk about our uh, latest uh, progress, which we started uh, some years ago. And in the one year ago, or one and a half year ago, me and Jeffrey Kering already uh, gave a talk about the beginning of our uh, GPU computations on uh, synchronization problems. Uh, since then, uh, I made uh, extended simulations in collaboration with Gustavo Deco, who is a uh, head of uh, uh, a department of brain sciences at the University of Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona. And uh, we obtained some interesting results, which I would like to share with you. Okay. so. Theoretical research and the experiment suggests that brain operates at or near critical state between sustained activity and an inactive phase. And uh, it is known, as I already mentioned in my comment, that uh, optimal computational properties can be found at criticality. So for those who this criticality is not so well known, just to remind you, uh, this criticality occurs usually at second order phase transitions. And uh, when you have a diverging correlation length and correlation time and uh, fluctuation and susceptibility also high. So this makes a neural or a brain system highly sensitive it, if it is in the critical state. Another thing is that in individual neurons are known to exhibit uh, periodic signals, even without contact. So this brought up the idea that uh, we can have a critical behavior at, uh, at the synchronization transition point. And this is what we were planning to investigate with simulations on a large human connectome. The model we used was this uh, so-called Kuramoto oscillator model uh, invented in 1975. And uh, this is just a set of uh, ordinary differential equation where you have uh, phases, theta, theta i, located at uh, nodes. And uh, the difference of the phases uh, is a function of psi. This gives you the interactions uh, between the nodes. And they are coupled together with the, which is denoted by W uh, i j, it's a coupling or weight, mat weight matrix and summed up for, for J. And there is a global coupling in the system. So uh, just to remind you up to this point, this is uh, for physicists, it is something like the XY model, but on top of it, we have these omega I zeros in the equation, which are intrinsic frequencies of the oscillators. These are fixed in uh, time. So this gives you some kind of quenched disorder to the system and some very non-trivial behavior. Yeah, so we have a phases and a global coupling, weighted adjacency matrix, okay. And uh, so if you follow the evolution of this uh, system, uh, you can calculate an order parameter which is just uh, the average of phases denoted by R. So the absolute value, which is a complex number in, in principle. And this order parameter uh, changes at the synchronization phase transition. That means if you have high coupling, then uh, the R goes to some constant values into some steady state constant values in the infinite time limit. Or if you are below this KC 
uh, critical point, R goes to zero, but in finite systems, it doesn't go exactly to zero, but it has some remanent fl small fluctuation, which is characterized by one over N uh, to the uh, one half. So there, it, it is something like the in independent oscillators had some uh, intrinsic small Gaussian fluctuation remained. And uh, if you are just at the critical point and you start a system from an incoherent initial state, a random state, the R uh, behaves in a uh, scaling way. So that means it grows by theta time to the eta exponent. So it goes with the power law. And also there is a factor of n to the minus one half, which is just the size dependence times a scaling function. But the main point is that there is this power law behavior at the synchronization transition. Now the graph we investigated was a huge structural graph, which we could download uh, from the repository of the Open Connecton project. Uh, it has something like 800,000 800, nodes and four times 10 to the seven uh, power law distributed weighted links. We investigated such a huge systems uh, to get rid of the uh, correction to scaling, which can blur uh, real scaling behavior at a critical point. And uh, topological features of this graph has been shown by our uh, paper with Michael Gessner in 2016 in scientific reports. So we have also shown in a previous publication in 2019 that in this model, you can find uh, dynamical scaling behavior. And below the critical point, there is a, another scaling, extended scaling region, which is called uh, frustrated synchronization uh, region. Okay, before going further, let me just uh, mention a few technical details, but I don't go into very deeply because if you are interested, it is recorded by Jeffrey from the previous year, and I'm not an expert on it. So just to remind you, we have this Kuramoto equation, which is a coupled uh, ordinary differential system, and you plug in the connection matrix at the uh, lambda jk, which is just provides a sparse, almost random-like graph. And this requires uh, explicit storage of the network topology. Uh, and uh, to enhance the performance, we use some uh, sparse representation by a list of, of, of the connections. And this uh, calculation requires uh, techniques of uh, single instruction, multiple task uh, vectorization tuned uh, by operation and mem memory ordering. Okay, what we used were just standard libraries. The boost libraries, which is a template library for solving ordinary differential equations. Uh, and the program was written in CUDA. And another library Jeffrey used, it was this VEX-CL, which is a library for offboarding uh, vector expressions. It is also available both for CUDA and OpenCL. And we used uh, these libraries uh, for solving the equation with the fourth order runga kutta uh, solver. Mm. So 
computing the derivatives uh, remains to be the most time consuming part of this uh, whole problem. So this is for the implementation and the efficiency just to remind you, uh, I just provide some figures which uh, Jeffrey already showed you. It was measured on a Tesla P100 card and uh, main conclusion is that uh, this is remains to be a memory latency bound problem due to the random access of uh, neighbors. But the implementations uh, could achieve the uh, integration of random graphs with a speed up of something like 20 improved throughput over a single CPU socket. And we want to mention that this uh, method is also adaptable to other models, something like the second order Kuramoto, which we are also using for describing uh, electrical power grids. So going back to the physics or statistical physics, uh, what we have done after solving this uh, Kuramoto equations. We wanted to determine the characteristic time tau t. And uh, so we started the runs from incoherent state and the graph, you see the time evolution of, of single realizations for many single realizations. In particular, you see R, the disorder parameter, which starts to grow and fluctuate. And after some time, it can dip back to this uh, 10 to the something like uh, 10 to the minus three, which is some, just the square root of one over N corresponding to the incoherent state. Uh, when the uh, system dips back to this value, we considered this uh, spontaneous uh, synchronization, so-called avalanche finished. And uh, we measured the times uh, of these avalanches and made a histogramming uh, for 10,000 independent uh, uh, random uh, conditions. Here the randomness comes from the omega i, the intrinsic frequencies of the systems. And the histogramming was done at the transition point, which was tuned carefully. And after making the histogramming, we obtained these uh, uh, distributions for different coupling uh, parameters, 1.7, 1.6, down to 1.2. And you can see some power law tails of the durations of these desynchronization events. And you can fit um, power loss on the tails of these distributions and uh, obtain uh, the critical exponent. So just at the transition point, which is about 1.6, you got the uh, exponent 1.2, but this does not agree with the brain experiment because uh, the experimental values uh, provided by the power Finnish power group from 2013 gives you for this tau t a value between 1.5 and 2.4. The interesting thing that if you go below the transition point, you still find this uh, power loss. And uh, this is due to this uh, disorder and the so-called frustrated synchronization subcritically. This we have already announced and published in the previous work. The new thing was, was in this collaboration with uh, Gustavo Deco. He highlighted some points coming from experiments. One of them is that uh, brain experiments are done with omega i's intrinsic frequencies uh, greater than zero. 
and uh, of course uh, we don't have in the eye uh, rotating um, things but uh, just uh, oscillating neurons so omega i should be greater than zero and also the distributions that uh, are very narrow so uh, we have a very uh, low frequency oscillators according to the measurements the mean value of the omega i is just 0.05 and the uh, sigma is just 0.02 but fortunately it turns out the kuramoto equation can be rescaled because the kuramoto equation is known to have exhibit a galilean invariance uh, in terms of this uh, omega i um, velocities of, of the angles. So if, we, if you rescale the omega i's by a factor of a, you have to rescale the time and the couplings and uh, the results which we obtained earlier uh, could be valid uh, even for this uh, low frequency range uh, dictated by the experiments. That, that, that is a very good thing because uh, if you want to investigate directly uh, these uh, small omega eyes, you, need, you would need a very strong couplings and the stability of numerical solution of the Kuramoto equation breaks down and, and makes the problem very unstable. But with this uh, rescaling uh, gauge invariance, uh, uh, you, can, you can solve it uh, much easier. Another thing was that uh, we can have uh, a stochastic noise. So we added a Gaussian distributed uh, annealed noise to the Kuramoto equation. And we were curious what happens to the solutions uh, in the presence of this uh, uh, stochastic so-called annealed noise. And uh, as the figure four here shows, it turned out that this weak, if we have a weak stochastic noise, it can have a very negligible, negligible effect on the distributions. So you have the uh, no noise points and uh, which is uh, the blue ones and and those which have a, a small amplitudes of uh, additional uh, stochastic noise and the distribution distributions do not really change so it means the stochastic noise is not relevant and uh, we published the uh, results uh, in archive and uh, it will be, it will appear in Journal of Neuroscience uh, soon. So finally, let's, let me summarize the results. Ch Jeffrey implemented the Kuramoto uh, ordinary equation solver, which is running efficiently on GPUs, even in case of uh, sparse random graphs. My experience was on uh, Mara Nostrum 4 a machine which is in Barcelona Supercomputing Center uh, is the following. This, this is a huge supercomputer which has uh, IBM Power 9 uh, CPUs and uh, four uh, V100 Volta GPUs per node. So it's a very fast machine and uh, I could measure a speed up of something like a factor 100 with respect to my uh, CPU runs at home on, on my machines. So it's, it's very remarkable. And it allowed us uh, to show the effects of weak thermal fluctuations, uh, something like in a visit of uh, two weeks uh, in Barcelona. And uh, we like to acknowledge uh, uh, support from the HPC Europe C program uh, also from OTCA, and the publication in neuroscience is scheduled. We want to give a technical paper with Jeffrey and the continuation to study 
on a connectome of the fruit fly is, is founded. This has an importance because uh, this only have uh, 40,000 nodes, but these nodes are exactly uh, determined, unlike uh, the ones which we used, which were uh, obtained by uh, tracked racing algorithms. So it's not uh, fully exact. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Kesa. Uh, I'm asking uh, the audience from outside for questions. I cannot see anything in the chat box, but uh, we might be, we might ask some. Uh, anybody else, else from, from inside? This is a rather technical talk. Not really. So maybe I can ask just a simple thing that, that finally for this calculation you are using your own devices or the laboratory devices or the VPL cloud. So which is which is the most efficient for this? Finally, we used uh, both the uh, BSC Mara Nostrum supercomputer and the NEF uh, supercomputer in Debrecen 2 in, in Hungary. Mm -hmm. We used bo both of these uh, huge machines. We didn't use the Wigner uh, GPU system. Thank you. 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 Th